And we're good to go. Just one quick check. Okay, looks like everything's cool. All right. All right. So today we're going to just do a, a little bit of information on, you know, people want to know how to master NLP when they first start learning it or maybe they've been into it for a while. And usually what happens, people get into NLP and or hypnosis first and then the other. And they don't really do it that often. Maybe they have another career that they do to, you know, pay the bills. So it, it, they don't get the practice that they, that they would really l like to do. Uh, so well, what we're going to do today is work on some of the secrets on, on how to become more of a master at this NLP, as we call it. So secret steps to NLP mastery. What would happen if you could master NLP in a few easy steps, right? Well, you can. The first thing you have to do is find someone that has done it and basically do what they did. I mean, that's one of the rules of NLP uh, is, you know, repeating a process that someone else does and have success. But it's also no secret that most people never take their skills beyond a very base level. Most people jump in and they don't they don't get to that elite level and there's a lot of reasons, right? Lack of clear goals in learning. Why are you learning in LP? You know, what's your goal? What's your end goal? The clearer the end goal, the easier the learning. And let's be honest, there's a lack of time. You know, there's only so much time in a day. So as you people get into this uh, field hypnosis neurolinguistics or neuro linguistics and hypnosis and they have another full-time career that's 40 50 60 hours a week so when do you have time to do this right then there's a lack of drive it's hard to stay focused and I do like the shiny toy syndrome you know oh I mean I run into people at a conference this year they're into NLP oh my god it's the it's the it's the greatest it's the greatest stuff since sliced bread. Okay, great. Now, but next year I run into them. They're into EFT. All right. Then the next year they're into regression therapy. It's whatever the current shiny toy is. Maybe something new hits the, I remember when EFT hit, uh, the hypnosis world. And... You know, I was I was lucky. I was exposed to it when it was TFT from Dr. Callahan. So it had been around for a while. Well, once there was proprietary information, it was licensed. But anyway, once all that got uh, uh, straightened out, of course, it hit the world. And, oh, my God, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? So, you know, it's whatever the current shiny toy is. That's why you get lack of drive. There's so many things to learn. That I will agree with, right? But... You know, as we say in the martial arts, master one art before you begin to learn another. Now, you never truly master every aspect of an art, like a martial art, whether it's Shotokan or Taekwondo or something. It's a lifetime thing. But at least become a master of it before you go and add a new skill, right? Or then you end up with a hodgepodge of stuff that doesn't work, and then it's not replicatable. And also, one of the reasons people don't get to the elite level is they have no true understanding of how to do NLP covertly. You know, if you really want to be a master at it, you have to be able to do it in steps, in sequence, like in a session, you know, or in a seminar. But also, you should be able to just wrap out a uh, NLP technique and have the person that you're talking to not even know that you're doing it, right? And basically, most of these problems can be traced to bad or ineffective trainers. You know, why are there a bunch of bad or ineffective trainers? Well, it's the, it's the ripple effect. If you're trained by a bad or an ineffective trainer and you don't know it when you're first being trained, of course, then if you follow that lineage, eventually maybe you're training people and then it just ripples down through, you know. So where do these bad or ineffective trainers come from? Well, first of all, the people that can become too, too much theory-based, you know. Oh, you know, this works in theory or, I, you know, it's all theory. They don't have any real-world experience, right? Also, you can judge a, uh, an effectiveness of an art, in my opinion, 
is does it have any useful applications from the very start? Can you begin to do this quickly, right? Especially in a field like NLP and even hypnosis, where you talk about what's hypnosis claim to fame? Speed. What's NLP's claim to fame? Speed. Well, why should it take you months to master something, right? I mean, maybe to master it, but to be able to go like, oh, I can go do this. You know, you should be able to do it pretty quickly, right? And if it's, if it's laid out in clear enough steps, it's easy. And there's no self-growth built in is another problem. Uh, what happens for this to really become effective, most people want to learn this stuff, even at the professional level. And I can speak that way because, you know, I see it with psychologists and, and uh, you know, alcohol and drug counselors, social workers, other people I deal with. I'm a psychologist. Um, is they want an aspect of self-growth, right? Even once you're a professional and you're really doing it, you're always, if you're cognizant of it and you know what's going on, you're always working on things yourself. So you want some self-growth built into the training. It can't just be about, I'm going to do this with my clients. I'm going to use NLP in my office or in my business. Well, there should be some self-growth built in, right? Also, a lot of trainers cannot transfer the information in a way that people can understand. Right? This is basically it goes back to bad and ineffective trainers of them. Uh, you know, again, just at a base level, you have visual, auditory, kinesthetic people. Can the trainer teach all three of those groups there? What about people that are internally motivated versus people that are externally motivated? Is that built into the, into the training? Do I understand that some people are more, well, they want to learn this just because they want to learn it. Other people want to learn it because they want to go out and mess with people. I don't care, but can they set that up, right? And do they basically teach to the, all the logical multiple levels, right? Uh, again, you know, I mean, if you're only teaching at the spiritual level to use, mul to use logical levels, is it applicable in the environment, right? Can you teach things in the environment that impact the spirituality? Oh, yeah, I think so. You know, you change your behavior, you change your environment, it may change your spiritual outlook, right? So it's interesting. Also, a lot of the trainers really don't know covert skills. They're not, it's not built into every aspect of their training. If they were, it would, it would speed up some of the truly transfer of useful information, right? And here's why it doesn't work. Starting too complex. Sometimes trainers want to appear smart. I think we all want to appear smart. So we use complex terms. We use, we use all this stuff to appear like I'm smarter than you. Well, first of all, in, if I'm teaching a new class of NLP, I don't have to appear smart to them when it comes to NLP. I, I do know NLP. This is what I do, right? So they... So they try to, you know, just come across as smart. And some of this is in the language. You know, I, I, there's a thing in NLP, right, where we call, and today I'm working on not saying right so much, so bear with me, or you know, like, uh, all this stuff. Called, there's a technique called, uh, Transderivational search, which means look through your past. Well, when I'm first teaching it, I'm not going to say transderivational search. I'm going to say look through your past. I'm teaching a technique. I'll be up there and doing it, da da da. Now, look through your past and do this. Sometimes people, if they're not cognizant of it, they'll go, now, do a transderivational search. Well, if the person sitting there never heard the damn term transderivational search, what are they going to do? They're going to what? Well, first of all, two th one of two things can happen. One, they just sit there because they don't want they don't want to appear stupid. Or then you have to take a moment and and, and break down what transderivational search is. Personally, I like to teach real world words and then tell people, well, you know, read the glossary and you'll see these terms. And then as I go on, I'll start using terms transderivational search, things like that. You know, affect bridge, things like this. Well. I'm going to do it and then talk about it, not the other way around. Also, a lot of trainers have the incorrect use of humor. Humor is, is 
super valuable as a tra- you know, in training, but you have to really understand how to use humor, you know, when to use humor, what what's humor's for, uh, and you know why you're doing it. Also, this can really back into not understand modeling, realizing that the people you train are going to model you, especially at the basic level, because they don't have any skill set to draw from, right? So the first expo- exposure, um, the first exposure, is going to be their base model. So if you're a technic, a technocrat, very detail oriented, this, this, and this, your people are going to model that. And of course, the people that are really into that will model it better. But you'll also drop away the people that aren't like a technocrat or very detail oriented. So if you're an effective trainer, if you understand modeling, realize these people are going to model it. What's the number one thing you want them to model? Is it you got to master the damn steps, you know, you skip a step, it's not working, or do you want them to model curiosity and joy and, and, and fun in it? I don't know. That's up to you as a trainer or your trainer, but think about how you were first trained, your very first trainer. Now, after you have a big experience in a, in a field, you're going to see it differently. And then you can pick and choose. Like, I like this about this trainer. I don't like that. Uh, I always self-disclose when I teach. I, what else can I do? Uh, I'm taking acting classes again. And it, I love it. I like acting. Uh, and it's basically based on film, which is my weak spot. I don't know how to act on film. I'm learning. I'm a stage actor. So the teacher has a class. And in the current class, there's a lot of people there that never really acted. And so I can see that they're modeling her big time. And that's wonderful. She's a working actress. She, she, she's, she's great. Right? But I'm sitting there going, well, you know, you know. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid, as they say in cult cult training, right? Uh, it it's it's wonderful, but I have a different skill set going into this. You know, I I've been professionally trained as an actor. There's a lot of things I know I need to work on. I want you to help me with that. I don't need to do. I'm I'm just going to disregard some of the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of interesting. So. Does the trainer understand true modeling? What about understanding conscious, subconscious teaching? You're teaching to the conscious level, but you're really teaching to the subconscious level. That goes back to modeling. What's the number one thing you want to model? I like to mo- I want my students to model joy, helping people, and the and the wonder. My God, this is so freaking cool! All right, that's the number one things I'm trying to get through. And then again, a lot of people aren't using NLP to teach NLP. Again. Uh, NLP talks about we can make things fast, effective, more useful, and then they want to make the trainings longer and more complicated. So are you using NLP to teach NLP? Are you using hypnosis to teach hypnosis? Do you, if, do you close every day, at least once a day, hypnotize the group? Well, how do you not if you're into NLP and hypnosis? I don't understand that. I do not understand that. If nothing else, put them in trance, tell them everything they did today, and this is what you did, repeat it in your mind. Oh, my God, it's going to play mind uh, in your mind all night long. It speeds up learning. And, again, this also means that the trainer probably has no clue to real-world applications. And going back to what I always say, do they understand covert techniques? Are they installing this even as they're doing it? And some trainers like to withhold information. You know, Oh, we'll get this at the next level. You'll get this at the next level. So you want to work on all of those things, right? So how to master NLP? There's a few steps. Step one, know what you, know that you want to learn more. If you think you've learned it all, the game's over, right? Uh, I was just at a martial arts uh, thing, uh, and... Well, it was a black belt uh, test, but we got to play before and after. And now the ones I could really, it was kind of cool. There's a couple of world champs that train there every once in a while. A kickboxing, you know, he's now retired from active fighting, but it was full contact kickboxing down in South America. He was a champ. Another guy, champ in another couple of arts. Uh, they really want to learn more. And there's a few people. Oh, I... I no, I don't want to learn that. 
I know what I need to know. My master taught me. Well, again, it goes back to their trainer. That's kind of what their trainer said. Their master taught them. You don't need to go anywhere else. But think about it. You know, where do you want to be? So you know that you want to learn more. And experience failure as a learning experience. Again, I'll use this martial arts thing. I I got to show, I was showing a pressure point and how to do this one pressure point. There's a guy there who's a world champ kickboxer, could kick my ass, you know, many times over. He could still do a, a I mean, he could stand next to a wall and put his leg straight up. I mean, he can do head kicks. He's a, and he's a nice, gentle man. A lot of these master martial artists are gentle. You know, they're, they're truly gentlemen. And, but I'm showing him that, and he didn't have it right at first. But he's like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. So everything, he didn't take it as failure. He was he was learning from the setback. Oh, that, oh, I get it now. You need to do this to do that. I see, yeah, yeah it's a setup, da, 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 da. Whatever I was teaching is inconsequential. Was the way, and that was great for the students there. These kids, kids, they were, they were all police officers, by the way. They were getting ready to take their black belt. They got to see that this guy, these guys, these masters, want to learn more. And in fact, their primary teacher kept saying how these are some of the people that taught him. This guy taught him uh, grappling. This guy, I taught him some pressure point stuff. This other guy teaches him this. It's like, wow, that was wonderful. And, and he kept stressing about, well, you, when you first learn it, it's awkward. It's different. So you're learning from those setbacks. And again, there's no one true technique for any situation. You know? And in fact, a lot of techniques will work in a lot of different situations. You get three master NLPers, present them with a problem. We may do three totally different things, and it'll all be effective. Right? And if you really understand that you're never done learning, then you're on your way. That's step one. Step two, you have to be open to new ideas. You have to incorporate change into your mindset. You have to be willing to change. This is a hard set. You know, we, we talk about, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm willing to change. Are you? Are you going to try something new? Are you willing, I should put up there, are you willing to look stupid when you first do it? You know, I, I always think about people I know at the health club that guys, they won't go into some of the aerobics classes and that because they'll say, I don't want to look, look stupid. They're not willing to incorporate things into their, new things into their mindset. You know, and you realize, you have to realize that your ability to learn is limited by your ability to change and try new things. The more you open to change, the more you'll learn. All right. Step three, these are some simple things, but do you do them? You have to go toward fear and the unknown. Are you willing to step in there? And I, 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 I self-disclose, I have this problem. A friend of mine, an actor, said, let's take, you know, he was telling me about this class. And I went, wow, that's kind of cool. He said, well, didn't you say you want to, I've done some film. I'm starting to do these little action movies. I need to learn more. You know, it's a different medium. But it's fearful for me. I don't know it. It's unknown. And I have a little bit of expertise. This is especially hard if you have a little bit of expertise in it, in something close to it. Like, again, in this acting, I've done over 100 stage plays. And so I'm pretty good on stage. Am I willing to step into there where I don't know what I'm doing? And then I have to do things differently. Uh, last night, I, in fact, the class was last night. We started working on a scene. And she goes, you know, I could tell you're a stage actor. You do this, you do this, you're theatrical. But you, you say you want to work on film. I'm going to show you how to work on film. It has to be this. You know, first of all, the guy's one, you know, two... Excuse me, I said a lot of those. Uh, he's right. You don't have to use your stage voice. I have a tendency. I step up on stage. This has helped me as a trainer because I step up on stage. My voice goes up. I, I don't need to be mic'd in most rooms. I've been at conferences and the mics go out. I'm not all freaked out. I speak loud. I'm a, I'm, I'm a stage actor. But it's fearful and unknown. Now I got to do it in film, which is tight. Anyway, same with my friends that are mar that not martial artists, but uh, at the health club, they're in shape. They're bodybuilders and that, so they have an expertise in that. They don't want to look stupid and step into uh, the aerobics room. Okay? But if you always did what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And you have to know that there'll be growing pains. 
I'm learning. I'm doing different things. You have to embrace the challenge. Can you say, this is cool. I don't know what I'm doing. How am I going to get better at it? Not like, screw this. I'm going to go back and do what I did. I'm not taking the aerobics class. I'll go lift weights. Right. So let's have fun. Let's embrace the challenge. And again, be open to looking lost. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is weird. Right? Step four is you have to value learning and experience over qu quick rewards. Realizing that long-term learning and long-term experience is actually better than a quick reward. One of the bad things about hypnosis and NLP is some of the stuff is quick. You learn it quickly. You get quick rewards. Like, you know, you show somebody how to do a trance, boom, they're putting people in trance. I, how long does it take me to, how long, somebody says, how long would it take me to uh, teach them to hypnotize somebody? I said, give me three minutes. Now, you'll spend years figuring out what to do once you got them in trance, but trance is a natural experience. It's not that hard to put people in trance. And, again, it's easy to experience success, whether that's money or your clients changing, you know, getting accolades, and think you're done learning. This is what we see happen a lot in the NLP and the hypnosis world. They open a clinic. Their clients love them. They give some speeches. They get loved. I'm done. I don't need any more. No, I don't. I, I don't have to go. I'm at a conference. I never go see other trainers. Why? Because what could they teach me? Well, that's a interesting mindset. You have to accept challenging tasks in your new skill set. So try things. You're learning these things, and they should get progressively harder. You know, try a new technique for an old problem. Once you learn NLP, well, oh, you know what? I, I just read this technique that someone came up with. And so rather than do what I usually do, a new behavior generator, I'm going to try this just to, just to try it. Doesn't mean I can't then go in if I'm convinced I still should do a new behavior generator. Great thing about NLP and hypnosis, I can, I can still add that. But I can try a new technique, right? Take new classes. Uh, from different people and take unrelated classes just take classes learn right and take ba basic classes again I always use the martial arts metaphor there again I I go to the a lot of the training I went to one uh, everyone in there had been training much longer than me and I've been trained 20 something years uh, pretty consistently and you know, some started as kids and they're still training, and yet it's a basic class. We're working on a kick, front kick. How hard is it to do a freaking front kick? Well, it's not that hard, but you know what? When you really work on a basic skill, it you realize maybe you've tweaked it. Maybe you've done different things, which is wonderful, but now you go back and you just do the basic skill. Why does you know, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees, three of the best, court, and even Aaron Rodgers, but let's say Peyton Manning and Drew Brees, two of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game. Why do they go back and take basic skill sets on throwing a football? You know, they made a big deal about Peyton Manning and his the, one of his coaches going down to a, a, a college to talk to the college coach about quarterback play. Why would they do that? They're, you know, somebody, he's going to he, eat by many considered the greatest quarterback ever to play. Why would he do that? Well, he wants to learn more, right? They work on their footwork. They work on their basics, right? You have to expand your knowledge base, right? This is step four, and this would be like 4A. And, and this that's why taking classes that interest you outside your normal skills. I think taking my acting classes helps me as a trainer. I think taking my training classes helps me as an actor. I think taking... Thing I'm, t I'm taking uh, internet marketing classes. It's just fun. It makes me realize there's a lot of shit I don't know. I need to learn more. You know, I'm ignorant to a lot of the world, which is fine. Ignorance, ignorance doesn't mean anything. Uh, so that's fun, and also if you do something you're not good at. And if you use our skills to master that, then it makes you even more in love with the skills. I, last night driving home from my one class, I'm thinking, you know, why am I not doing a lot of what I do with my NLP for my acting? So 
So it's kind of cool, right? And again, see how unrelated skills can transform your NLP skills. You'll, you'll notice that a lot when you begin to do it. Step five. Know you have a lot to learn by reviewing the basics. I was just uh, uh, watching something someone sent me. And it was one of my trainers. And I'm watching. It was a basic skill. I'm like, wow, I forgot that. I don't know if I said I forgot that or that's an interesting take. I've got no problem admitting that. One of my students was doing it better than me at the, in that. Wow, cool, cool, right? Um, so because that helps you review your basic skills with new eyes and ears. It also helps you watch others use their skills without judgment. This one can be hard. I do it different. Well, I don't care. It's just I want to see how you're doing it. And step five is you also begin to add the covert level to NLP. Practice doing it covertly. Step six is where it gets a little even tougher, where you have to do an honest self-assessment. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And one of the ways to do it, what do you avoid? What's something you hate to do in, in our NLP world? Maybe you need to work on that. Yeah, and then you need to take the time to work on yourself and your skills. Not just with your clients, but try it. Maybe go to a seminar, go to a weekend, go to a conference. You know, it's one of the reasons they they say, whoever they are, me and my they say, uh, that continuing it is so important in the professional world. They want people to take time to go and learn, do different things, get away from the clients and just sit in, a say, a conference, right? Psychology is big with that, really, really big with that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Here's a secret aspect, right, with this, which is you have to add covert and conversational hypnosis to your skills. Then it, it, it speeds up your, your taking it to the next level. Step seven, of course, is get a mentor and a coach. You need outside insight. You can't judge the show from the inside. You can't direct the play and be in the play. That's tough. You need some outside insight. I say that sometimes. People go, yeah, well, all these, you know, Clint Eastwood and Robert Refer, some of these guys, they've been in movies, they direct. Well, you're talking movies where you can go back, watch the film, and then reshoot it. You're not talking about being on a play. Rarely can you have a play where you're directing it and you're in it. If that happens, you usually have a co-director or a stage manager you really trust. But you can't judge the show from the inside. One of the things I... I I think an advantage I had going into training was coming from theater where you had to trust the director because you can't see what they're seeing. And so when a trainer would, when I'm taking trainers, when I first took some trainers training and they're giving me ways to be better, realize, well, I was trying to do this. Well, it didn't come across that way, son. Oh, okay. I know that from acting. No, no. Why'd you do the line this way? Well, that eh, didn't work. Do something different or try it this way. That's fine. Because you can't judge it. You need a clean eye. And again, in step seven, you really have to master conversational NLP and hypnosis. And then you begin to put it all together. Right? So the easy way is to put it together and grow. Right? And, and here's, here's practice all the things we talked about. Right? So what I'd want you to have is conscious, subconscious insight. You know, be in a safe place to grow, whether that's a class with me or with someone else or a conference. But know and pick, pick your safe places where you can grow. Does the teacher, does the mentor, does the people you're around encourage you to try new things, try different things, to be different? And be able to pick good role model or models. You need more than one. Implement these seven steps and then master covert and conversational NLP. So, of course, i got to introduce something here. Secret mind control with basic NLP. So it's a limited time offer I'm going to do, which is you get a downloadable basic NLP to review as you get to take that 
Of course, I've just started the secret mind control. That's, there's currently seven modules up there, and at least one or two more are going up. And it's all about conversational NLP and hypnosis. But what I'm going to ask people to do is to review the basic NLP course, then go back, do the secret mind control course, conversational hypnosis and NLP, and then even go back and if they can, <clears throat> review the basic NLP course again. And then they'll go, oh, I get it. Especially people that have taken NLP in the past. What's, it, what, what's in secret mind control right now is the first module is jumpstart your skills, how to, how to begin to add it, how to build your confidence with waking hypnosis and conversational hypnosis and NLP. I give you a real world template to begin to master these things. We begin to figure out what is your own truth? How do you take this into your own truth? I teach the secrets of cults. How do you create a cult? Uh, I do a whole level on uh, logical levels with some magic. I teach magic words again. I do different things. Uh, module 7, which I just put up, which was covert NLP. And then I'm going to do a, a, at least one other covert NLP module where I take one or two of the big NLP techniques, I show you how to break them down into the, into the steps and then, then do, do them covertly in story form or uh, in the last module, I showed one in a story form and I showed one in more of a quote form. I had a client once who, and then I did an NLP technique and it was buried inside. And these were from real live examples. <clears throat> so there'll be at least eight modules. You also have the community and lifetime access to the to the program. So if I valued it out, it would be about $3,970. The course is usually $397, 10% of, of, of what it's worth. I'm doing it this way because I'm sick and tired of all the bad information out there about covert and conversational hypnosis. I'm also sick and tired of all the people that really can't get their NLP and their hypnosis skills to the next level. Uh, this field's been very good to me. It's gave me a life beyond my wildest dreams. I need to give back. So what I'm going to do now, though, however, is I'm going to offer for a limited time this for just $197. So it's a one-time offer. You get a downloadable basic NLP to review. And then you can take the secret mind control course. Uh, which actually would make this closer to a $5,000 value. Uh, so you're going to master conversational hyp hypnosis and NLP. If you want to master NLP and hypnosis, you have to be able to do it with or without formal trance. And these prices will not be repeated. So if you went to, if you go to www.secretmindcontrol.com, the price will still say $397, but when you click on it, and this is for people that only go through this, then they'll notice it's only 197. So the command is go to www.secretmindcontrol.com. Secretmindcontrol.com. It'll still say the normal price, which we'll go back to in a few days. But if you click on it now, it's only 197. I, I believe you have a decision to make. I believe this is the best course on NLP ever. And it's different than anything else because it has new material, the conversational stuff, and some research. I'm becoming more and more research-oriented. I also have 30 years of experience doing this. And if you bring your issues while you're working on some of these things, you'll get them resolved. And if you don't have this course, then you're going to stay stuck. And you can get started at home. That's the wonderful thing about this. Especially if you've taken classes in the past, this one you can do at home. It's an easy decision to make. So you save over three thousand actually over four thousand dollars. It's a one time offer to jump start your, your change efforts. And I want to help people shape the field of NLP, both now and into the future. You know, we we need more people at the cutting edge. And people have to be ready to take that challenge. And to do this, you have to be able to join a group of high achievers. So with, without covert NLP, without this class, you stay stuck. No true mastery. You may be very good at it, but you're not a master at it because you don't have elite skills. You can't do it just in 
a story for them or just sitting there talking to somebody. You really have no mentoring and you have no outside help. With it, you get true mastery, true growth, you get unstuck, you get personal growth, rapid breakthroughs, mentoring, some role models to follow, and you have more fun. So if you go to secretmindcontrol.com to secure your spot right now, uh, the PayPal button will only charge you the 197 and the payment will go to Dr. Will Horton, and you can plan your breakthrough. Right? So the time is limited. I, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to leave it up at this cost. Then I'll flip it back to its normal cost, which is still a bargain. Uh, and many people played much more for this course and those that have gone and got this information from other people spend thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars to offer you what I'm offering you now so I'm gonna ask that you sign up and start your road to mastery and join me on this wonderful world together and let's shape the world of NLP so hurry up do it right now go to secretmindcontrol.com if you have any questions you can call me uh, and have fun with this because it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to begin to do and to master. And I'd like to thank everyone for being a part of this call and helping me change the world. And again, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams, so help me give this back. So I'd like to thank you. Everyone go forward and have a great day.